How to tile a bathroom wall. Tiles make an excellent wall covering for bathrooms. They are waterproof, hard wearing and also look great. You'll find a full list of tools and materials you'll need at the end of this video. We'll assume that your surface is fully prepared for tiling, sanded, cleaned and sealed. It's a good idea to work out how many tiles you will need before you start. To calculate, simply divide the wall area that you want to tile by the area of each tile. It's worth adding 10% extra for edges and breakages. When you measure the dimensions of a design, remember to allow for grout gaps. For wall tiling, these are normally 2 to 3 millimetres. We're tiling onto a plastered wall, which will support tile weights up to 20 kilograms per square metre. See our table for information on different wall surfaces. Adhesive weight must also be included in your square metre calculations. The information you need to do this calculation will be on the adhesive packaging. Some tiles, such as natural stone tiles, may require sealing. Use the manufacturer's recommended sealant and apply before grouting. To create a balanced design, it's a good idea to work out how you will arrange your tiles. For example, if you are tiling a complete wall, allow for a similar size of cut tile at each side of the wall at the corners. And avoid small slivers at corners, as they are difficult to cut and look untidy. In fact, the closer a cut is to a full tile, the easier it is to make and the better it will look. The best way to work this out is to make a tile gauge. This is simply a piece of wood marked with the width of tiles on its side. It's like a ruler for tiles and will allow you to gauge what position your tiles should be in. To make a tile gauge, cut a wooden batten just longer than half your room. Place the tiles along its length, including spacers, and mark onto the batten. Then, find the horizontal midpoint of the wall and mark this point with a pencil. Hold your tile gauge onto this point so that one of its marks is on this centre point. Then move the gauge to the left, mark by mark, until the end of the gauge is close to the corner. If the gap between the end of the gauge and wall is more than half a tile's width, then this will form the perfect place to start your tiling. But, if this gap is less than a half a tile, then this positioning will look untidy. Should this happen, Move your central tile gauge mark to the right by exactly half a tile's width. You'll now find that the gap between gauge and wall is now greater than half a tile, which looks much better. Now mark on the wall where the first full tile will start. Then, using a spirit level, continue this line from top to bottom. Now follow the same procedure for the vertical positioning too. First, find the midpoint. Now, using the tile gauge and the same technique, work out where your first whole tile will start above the floor. Mark the start of the bottom row, and using the spirit level, draw the line across the whole wall. Now check for wires and pipes along both vertical and horizontal lines using a pipe detector. Then, screw wooden battens along your lines. These two battens mean that you now know exactly where to start your tiling from to produce an even, symmetrical, visually pleasing block of whole tiles. Now you're ready to start tiling your wall. The kind of wall you are tiling will dictate the kind of adhesive you use. Always check manufacturer's instructions. We're going to use a rapid set tile adhesive. It comes as a powder, and must be mixed with water according to the manufacturer's instructions. In this case, add twice the amount of powder to water. Then use a drill with a mixing paddle to mix the adhesive into a thick paste with no lumps. If using old adhesive from another project, make sure it is not out of date. To begin tiling, Use a trowel to scoop enough adhesive to cover about a square metre and apply to the wall. Spread the adhesive. Then, use the notch spreader to get an even covering. Place your first tile on the batten 
giving it a slight twist to really bed it into the adhesive. Then, place the next tile alongside, slotting in spaces between to ensure the right gap. Continue placing whole tiles across the wall, making sure they are still aligned to your batten. Place spaces between the tiles as you go. Check periodically that the tiles are flat and level using a spirit level. If they are not, you may have to remove the tile and scrape some adhesive off, or even add extra to even out the surface. Then, carefully wipe the tiles with a damp sponge to remove any adhesive that is on the surface and clear out excessive adhesive in between the tiles in the grout lines too. If the adhesive has dried, loosen it with warm soapy water. Allow the adhesive to dry, always checking manufacturer's instructions. Then remove the battens. Carefully measure the distance from the tile edge to the corner, allowing for the grout spaces you are using. Measure each tile gap individually as the wall might not be straight. Mark the measurements on a tile and cut. How to cut tiles. There are a number of different ways to cut straight lines across ceramic tiles, each with their own advantages. But with each method, shards of tile could fly off during cutting, so be sure to wear protective gloves and safety glasses or goggles. The simplest method to cut tiles is to use a tile scribe. Use a metal ruler and with a pencil or felt tip pen, mark a line across the tile. Scrape along the mark using the tile scribe and the metal ruler. Ensure that the tile is scored all the way along the length to prevent it from shattering. To snap the tile, place a pencil or similar under the line on the tile and apply downward pressure on the sides. Or you can rest the tile on the edge of a worktop and press on the sides. There are many other ways to cut tiles, including a tile cutting machine, a tile nipper, or a tungsten carbide rod. See our film How to Cut Tiles for more details. Having checked that the cut tiles fit correctly, apply the adhesive directly to the wall, or to the back of the tile if getting adhesive onto the wall is tricky. Then, press in position. Continue tiling up the wall. Fix tiles at the bottom of the main design using specifically cut tiles, as shown earlier. Use spacers to maintain gaps until the adhesive dries. Remove any excess hardened adhesive from tile surfaces using a window scraper. Be careful not to scratch any tile surfaces. Once the wall is tiled, allow the adhesive to dry according to manufacturer's instructions. Now it's time to grout your tiles. Grouting is important on tiled walls and floors to seal the tiles and make the surface water resistant and also for decoration. Grout comes in various greys and whites, as well as beige, charcoal and even black, so pick the one most suitable for your job. There are two kinds of grout, ready mixed and powdered. If you're using the powder, only mix up as much as you will probably use in 30 minutes as it will begin to dry after that time and become difficult to work with. Check the manufacturer's instructions for how much this will be. If using old grout from a previous project, make sure it is not out of date. One way to apply grout is to place a small amount onto the tiles with a grout spreader. Move it around and into the joints. Spread it using upward and diagonal strokes, working it into the gaps between the tiles. Work swiftly, as the grout will soon start to harden. Continue like this until you have done all the joints. If you are grouting a large area, consider using a professional grout float. After grouting, wipe tiles with a damp sponge to remove any excess grout before it hardens. If you pull any grouting out accidentally, you can press some back in with your finger or reapply with the grout spreader. Then use a grout finishing tool to finish the joints and give a neat appearance. Pull the shaper over the joints in an even, continuous movement. As the grout dries, a powdery film will become visible on the tiles.
polish this off with a soft, clean cloth, leaving your tiles sparkling. Grouting should last for at least 15 years, but you can extend the life of your grout by using a grout protector like this. It will create a barrier on top of the porous grout, protecting it from water, dirt, oil, grease and lime scale, making it easier to clean too. Like all tiling jobs, working around a window is easier if you plan ahead. Ideally tiles should be symmetrically aligned around your window for the most pleasing effect. Plan the placement of the tiles in the recess so that the grout lines in the tiles match the grout lines on the wall. Measure the depth of the recess up to the edge of the window, not the edge of the wall tile, so there is room for the trim. Measure each tile gap individually as the depth might vary and cut the tiles to fit. To finish the corners off neatly, use tile trim. Measure the height and width of the window recess and cut the tile trim to length. Use a mitre block and hacksaw to cut the ends of the tile trim at a 45 degree angle for a neat join at the corner. Spread adhesive, then press the tile trim into place and carefully place the tiles into position. Start at the bottom, work your way up the sides, and finish on the top. Add spacers as you go. To stop the tiles falling from the top of the window recess, measure and cut wooden supports, wedging them into place under the tiles. Leave in place for about 24 hours until the adhesive is dry. Finish by grouting then wipe down with a damp sponge. Your bathroom wall is now finished. Here is the list of tools you'll need to tile your bathroom wall. And here's the materials you will use. And this is the safety equipment.